Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of geography, we shall discuss the last part in the solar system. We have discussed the eight planets, asteroids, and we shall discuss some more things which are present in the solar system. And we shall discuss the glossary of the solar system. Some terms which are regularly asked in the general studies examinations like what are aurora, what are quasars, what are pulsars, etc. Okay, so in the part 3 of the solar system, first we shall discuss about meteors. Earlier we have discussed asteroids which are present between Mars and Jupiter. Okay, then what are meteors? So meteors are nothing but they are rocky debris. Okay, they are chunks of rock debris. They are actually called as meteoroids. Okay, so when they are called actually meteors or shooting stars, they are also called as shooting stars. Whenever they enter any planet's atmosphere, due to friction between the dust particles and the actual meteor, when they rub, so the meteors catch fire. Okay, have you seen some objects in the space which will be falling towards the planet like our Earth? which will be like moving uh, crackers. So some light objects will be coming towards us. So they are called as meteors. So when they enter the planet's at atmosphere, they are called as meteors or shooting stars. So they will catch fire because of the friction between the actual meteor and the dust particles in the atmosphere. So then they are called as meteors or shooting stars. And only some meteors or shooting stars will reach and touch or hit the ground of the planet. So when they reach the ground or the of the surface of the planet, they are called as meteorites. Okay, first they are meteoroids. Then when they enter the atmosphere, they are called meteors or shooting stars. When they hit the ground, they are called as meteorites. And they are just rocks of debris which move from the space towards the planet and they cannot support life. Clear with this? Moving on to next that is dwarf planets. Dwarf planets very small planets like we have Pluto, Iris, Make Make. Ceres also is, is called as dwarf planet. It is not only asteroid, it is also called as dwarf planet which exists in the asteroid belt. So what are these dwarf planets? So dwarf planets are again nothing but they are also rocks of debris. They, they are mostly present outside the eight planets that is after Neptune in the Kuiper belt. Okay, some are there in the asteroid belts also, but most of them are present in the Kuiper belt outside Neptune. So Kuiper belt is outside Neptune. All these Pluto, Iris, Make Make are present in outside the Neuto Neptune that is Kuiper belt and they cannot support any life. So out of all the dwarf planet which is closest to the earth obviously Ceres. It is obviously the largest of the asteroids and which is the closest to the earth. It is also called as dwarf planet. Okay, It was discovered in the 1801 and it is present in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Clear with this? Moving on to some more facts about dwarf planets. Some dwarf planets have moons like Pluto, Ceres. So how many moons does Pluto have? It has a five. Nix, Hydra, Charon, Kerberos, Styx. So some general studies, uh, those who said the question paper, they have asked about the moons of Pluto. Nix and Hydra, they have asked. Nix and Hydra are the moons of which of the following? So obviously Pluto. And Ceres has two moons and Make Make has zero moons. Okay. And New Horizons is the first space mission which were sent to study the Kuiper belt which is the home of the most dwarf planets in the world. New Horizons mission of NASA. Okay. So this is about dwarf planets. Moving on to Comets. So we have studied about asteroids, meteors, then we shall study about comets. So like asteroids, comets also revolve around the sun. So they have a head and a tail. Head is also called as coma, C-O-M-A. So we shall discuss what is actually comet. So comets are again rocks of debris 
okay frozen gases rocks and dust will form a canon okay so they also orbit the sun like planets and asteroids meteors will not orbit planets asteroids and comets will revolve around the sun clear with this same in the elliptical orbit like planets okay so whenever they come closer to the sun they spew some dust and gases okay so in this process they will form a head and tail head is called coma and tail is called the same tail so generally tail is pointed away from the sun that means head will be towards the sun and tail will be away from the sun while it is revolving around the sun and they also support they will not support life like meteors and asteroids and they don't have any moons and rings clear with this so this is about comets so comets and asteroids both will revolve around the sun meteors will not revolve around the sun clear with this generally meteors will enter any planet's atmosphere so this is about some of the terms which we need to know okay so what are the facts about comets so there are two types of comets one are short period comets and other is long period comets so if it is less than 200 years if it takes for a revolution those comets are called short period if it is more than 200 years they are called long period comets generally they are present outside kuiper belt in the oort cloud o o r t oort cloud okay and uh, most famous comet which is heard in the news is Halley's Comet which was appeared in 1986 and it repeats for every 76 years. Now, so next prediction we can see the Halley's Comet in 2061. And the famous mission is Philae Lander of European Space Agency which, has, which was sent through Rosetta spacecraft. It was sent to on a comet called 67P. Okay, the general name is Churyumov Gerasenko. Okay, this is the name of the comet. Famous Philae Lander was sent through Rosetta spacecraft by the European Space Agency onto the comet 67P. This was asked in many general studies examination. Clear with this? So this is about comets. We have studied about asteroids, meteors, and comets, which all rotate, revolve around the sun only asteroids and comets keep this in mind why i'm recollecting means because you have to be perfect in this okay whichever question comes about comets and meteors or asteroid you have to be able to answer this so that is my aim okay next we shall see some more terms related to space which are generally asked in either cgl exam or chsl exam or any other general studies examination so i want to give you this knowledge okay so let's see some terms related to space so first is aurora so aurora what do you mean by an aurora so aurora is our form whenever solar wind disturbs what do you mean by solar wind the wind which is coming from the sun so this solar wind disturbs the atmosphere of a planet so these auroras are produced so wherever they are formed in whichever region they appear they are named differently suppose if they are appearing in the northern hemisphere above equator they are called as the northern lights or aurora borealis suppose if they are occurring in the southern hemisphere below the equator they are called southern lights aurora australis so how to remember australia is in southern part we know it so southern lights are aurora australis so obviously aurora borealis will be in the northern hemisphere so this is a trick how to remember the planets i've told you so how to remember the eight planets so there's a trick my very enthusiastic mother has just served as noodles so m stands for mercury v stands for venus enthusiastic e stands for earth m stands for mars just j stands for jupiter U stands for Uranus, S stands for, sorry, just Jupiter, Cerberus, S stands for Saturn, U stands for Uranus, Noodles, N stands for Neptune. So my very enthusiastic mother just served us noodles. So this is a trick to remember the eight planets. Okay, so this is about auroras. Moving on to some more terms so then what is a black hole so black hole is something like it is a 
compacted huge mass which is gathered at one place so that is a black hole so black hole has a very high gravitational force keep this in mind so black hole is nothing but it's a very huge mass which is gathered at one place so it has a very high gravitational influence not not even light can escape its grip clear with this okay so it has a highest gravitational influence out of all the objects then what is chromosphere chromosphere is the middle layer generally the outer layer of the sun is we call it as corona corona is the high top layer of the sun then we have the actual chromosphere after chromosphere we have the photosphere so chromosphere we can say it is between photosphere and corona okay the so middle layer between photosphere and the corona generally it is 10000 kilometers thick and mainly composed of hydrogen then what is corona corona is the topmost layer of the sun generally it is not visible we have to make special arrangements for the our telescope to see this outermost layer of the sun because it is very lighten up because of the chemical reactions on the surface of this so first is corona the outermost layer then chromosphere then photosphere which will be at higher temperature is it photosphere or corona obviously photosphere because it is in nearest to the center okay moving on to the next some more terms like what do you mean by electromagnetic spectrum so electromagnetic spectrum generally it has a wavelength of different radiation like ultraviolet rays radio waves microwaves x-rays visible light gamma rays all these are they forming the electromagnetic spectrum clear with this then what do you mean by escape velocity so escape velocity is nothing but suppose if i give a velocity to an object it will escape from that planet and it will not return back that is called escape velocity earth has 11.2 kilometer per second Suppose if I give an object this escape velocity, so it will escape from that planet and it will not return back. So for Earth we have 11.2 kilometers per second. That is the escape velocity on Earth. Clear with this? Next moving on to extrasolar planet, planet or exoplanet. So any planet that orbits the sun is called as extrasolar planet or exoplanet except the sun any planet which orbits the sun is called as the exoplanet or the extrasolar planet next we shall see what is geosynchronous or geostationary orbit so any object which revolves earth taking the same time that is 24 hours for one rotation of the earth so that orbit is called as geosynchronous orbit so it will have the same speed and direction of the earth so generally we see GSLV, geosynchronous launching vehicle. So that rocket will launch any satellite into the geosynchronous orbit which will revolve around the earth taking 24 hours time and, will, and it has same speed and direction of the earth. Then what is the height from the earth? It is placed at 36,000 kilometers, approximately 36,000 kilometers from the earth so there the geosynchronous orbit when we keep it at 36,000 kilometers from the earth then it will revolve around the, sun, around the earth taking 24 hours time same that are same that of earth. generally this is, this is asked in many general studies examination clear with this so moving on to some more terms like great red spot so what is this great red spot generally it is in news so generally it is located on the earth's jupiter sorry generally it is located on the jupiter's upper atmosphere so it is it is a storm actually this is a circulating storm located on the jupiter's upper atmosphere and its width is around two to three times than that of sun that means it's two to three times larger than the sun this storm itself so this storm is called as great red spot and galileo he has discovered this great red spot in the 17th century itself so this storm on the jupiter's upper atmosphere is called as great red spot 
and next what is a light year so this is a distance traveled by a light that is photon in a year generally it is 10 trillion kilometers the distance traveled by light for one year this is around 10 trillion kilometers moving on to the next terms like nebula I already told you while I was explaining the origin of universe so nebula is nothing but it is a cloud of gases and dust so generally stars form from the nebula only generally hydrogen and helium are the main gases in this nebula clear about this moving on to the next Oort cloud I already told you after Kuiper belt we have Oort cloud so long period comets that is which take more than 200 years for revolution around the sun will be present mostly in the Oort cloud so for, we have eight planets asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter after eight planets that is Neptune we have Kuiper belt after Kuiper belt we have Oort cloud okay next moving on to some more terms like pulsars so what do you mean by pulsar it is highly magnetized neutron star which keeps on rotating okay so those are called as pulsars clear with this neutron means it doesn't have any charge neither positive or negative okay so this is a highly magnetized neutron star which is rotating in space is called as pulsars and it emits beam of electromagnetic radiation like ultraviolet rays radio waves or microwaves or gamma rays or visible light these are called pulses pulsars next we shall see what are quasars so what do you mean by quasar a quasar means a bright object in space very bright object in space and it is very far from the earth okay generally they give off the powerful radio waves only not total entire electromagnetic spectrum but they give off only radio waves so these are some of the important terms i want to mention in the part three of the solar system topic so hope you have learned enough things in the solar system topic so please be thorough with this so that we will not miss any question is my idea hope you are preparing well we shall discuss in the students discussion forum have a great day thank you so much